Doug Thompson, we're here in the shop today, and um, I've got to make a bunch of these pins for a little garden fence. I've got to do a bunch of them. I could do them one at a time on the Haasville, but I'm going to see if I can do three or four bends at one time. So what I've got to do, first of all, is I have to reimagine the bending dog, the standard bending dog that Haasville supplies. I need to make one that's a little taller so it'll support three or four rods easily. So the first thing I've got to do is cut two pieces of three eighths by inch and a half. Oh, at three and a half inches, but I'm going to match that angle. Okay, we've got rectangular bar, so I got to make sure that I cut it in the right orientation. What I want to do is I want to make one cut that'll produce the two parts. So that looks pretty good. We got a good start. So we've got our first piece cut. I'm going to lay it on one side of the bending dog. I'm going to just mark across here to square that up. And then I'm going to move the piece that I've cut over to here. Put a mark on my cut piece. And then using that, I can determine the length of the other piece that already has the angle cut into it. So that one angled cut is going to produce both, both sides of this tool. So I've grabbed a piece of half inch round. That's going to be perfect. I'll flush it out on the front, fill it with weld. And that'll be our face piece. So that'll fit in there. So I just want to make sure that I know what that dimension is because the top of the Hossville bending pin has got to fit through that. I want to be perfect. I put a piece of half by one in there because I absolutely want to make sure that that dimension is good. Where I weld this is going to be important, so I'm going to tack on the corners left and right through. Uh, welding. Just going to put a little tack there just to hold it. Cut my wire again. Same thing on the other side. Now I'm going to come to the front, just double check all my alignments. I've got my copper block in front. To level everything off on the front, I'm just going to put a little weld up on top. One more on both sides. Now I'm going to pull my block and I'll weld up the front. So that was wedged in a little bit, I was surprised. So there it goes. Now I've got it out. Now I'm going to really weld this up. I'm going to throw this in the water right now. If it hardens up a little bit, great. It's all going into compression. So one of the important features of making a new bending dog is to use a piece of, I think it's three quarter nine thread that matches the existing thread on the factory bending dog. That way you can use the factory uh, adjustment nut for all of your operations. So I'm double checking the relationship between the factory bending dog and the two pins. And I'm gonna follow the lower portion as the control. It clears the frame by 16th of an inch. So I've gotta make sure that whatever I do follows that so that when I build the, the new bending dog that it doesn't um, interfere when I place it to work, that it doesn't interfere with the top frame. I want to block this up. I don't want any current going through the threads. So I'm going to block this up with some wood and hold it down with a piece of wood. Make it three shims that should do it. 
I'm going to go ahead and tack this. I'm going to leave a little bit of space between the front of the bending dog and the threaded rod. So if I have to move it around a little bit, I'll have space to do that. I decided I'm just going to TIG weld this. I don't want to mess around. I don't want to have any uh, chips fall into those threads. Well, so I've ground off the uh, galvanizing on this bolt, and I'm just carefully going to TIG weld this. So here we go. So everything looked perfect, except for the fact that I went over, whenever I do something like this, I'll tack it and I'll test it on the machine or whatever it is I'm doing, and I found out I'm upside down. And again, I just tacked it. I'm gonna cut it off, turn it over, redo it. We should be okay. But that should help. Pro tip, whenever you're welding, set your welding rod down like that, because if you set it on the table, you can't pick it up with your gloves. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit better. So the last thing I'm going to do with this tool is I'm going to hard face the very working end. And this is a trick that I learned from Jody over at WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. It's an incredible site. Go there. He's a fabulous educator and a just amazing welder. So I'm going to use a drill bit, an old drill bit. Pretty sure this is 01. And I'm just going to build up the very nose of this piece. It's the new dog, and then I'll grind it down and clean it up a little bit. This is 01, it needs to be oil quenched, but I'm just gonna kinda dip it like that, let it come out. This is how I've seen it done, I don't know if it works or not. This is not a really a critical application. And I've got a fair amount of heat behind it, so. Maybe this will help, maybe it won't. Maybe some of you have a better idea. So, so I just wanted to match the radius of the existing tool. I think I've got it. We've got a hardened tip out of that 01 drill rod and uh, I think it'll be just fine. Get this all worked out. So that's my bending setup. So again, I've lined up the, the front end of my uh, quarter inch rods in front of the bending dog, about a quarter of an inch. I've got it pretty tight and I'm gonna go ahead and bend it to the stop. So I'm hitting the stop and we just bent four parts at one time. 